Well, the ups and downs of Origin players backing up and their scores was on show in this one and obviously the rest of the games that followed on this Sunday. Three games it was. Let me know in the comments how you went this week and how, you, how many trades you're at as well. I think that's really important to note uh, coming into round 18. Obviously with Eels on the buy, pretty sort of, should be a pretty comfortable week for most people to get 17 on the park. And hopefully if you do have, you know, if you haven't got any trades left, you, you've kind of got through unscathed injury-wise. But Dave Fafita came back and showed exactly why he is one of the best edges in our game and is really going to be needed in, in the majority of people's sides come round 2021 for sure. The loss of 31k this week, he had the really high break even of near 100 there. And uh, yeah, the 74 kind of nullified the, the massive loss for sure. And for those that are still holding him, an awesome score for you at 74. But yeah, I don't think many have him still, uh, but he's going to be a great one to have. That's for sure later down the track. Carrigan, 51 minutes, still beat up 64. So showed here that the minutes did not cause any issues. Him himself and obviously Payne has played massive minutes in Origin. Has playing more than Carrigan there. And yeah, pretty well expected that, we, that Haas would get under 50 minutes in this one. And that's exactly what happened. But Carrigan with the 64 shows that he is still a guy that you're probably going to want to hold if you do currently own him all the way through. If you don't own him, probably not one of the guys you want to target. There's Isaiah Yo's, the, the Payne Hasses out there, you know, holding DeBell and holding Hawes, but these types of guys are going to be the ones. So probably not one to look at further, but yeah, definitely hold from here. Farnworth, the, 60, uh, the 54, so he showed that he's been yeah, a strong center keeper all year, making 96K on the season after a little bit of a lower one last, last year. But obviously with Broncos doing really, really well, for yeah, the entirety of this season so far, apart from this loss, really, he's been great at 54. But you know, all of the Broncos have a buy in round 19. Titans are done. Just remember that when you're going through this. But yeah, potentially some some issues coming out of this game as well uh, regarding Walshy. So might have an effect on Brimson or potentially Ponger as well. Payne asked 51. So yeah, did his job obviously in the 46 minutes. Still over a point a minute. Four in negatives, but two offloads, four tackle breaks there. And uh, did his job. Yeah, 51, you'll take that. There was a lot of other Origin guys that went less than that. You obviously would be liking him to get more, but I imagine next week is the week you'll get the massive score out of him. And, if, you know, he's definitely a great mid option for that. Seems like he, he wants to back up very regularly, so not a big risk on that front. Brian Kelly, the 50, he just continues to score pretty well, just averaging just under 40, which is good. Fought awake at the 46 in his 70 minutes, so, yeah, no, no rest for him after Origin, that's for sure. He didn't play a lot. Obviously, minutes-wise in origin, uh, but yeah, 46 for him. Still going to be around that 51 average that he's at right now. Price pretty much according to that. So I just think there are better mid-options, especially now that he's in origin. Flegler with a nice try in his one there. Camprera, the same on that front. Reynolds is 41. Not great. Again, not going to be a keeper long-term. So if you do want to move him on, I think now's a good week or in round 19 for sure. Beryl's a few people ask me about. He's just never been a super high... Scorer, he can obviously ball play, so he can get the assists, he can get the tries sometimes, but then you'll have games like this with the 38. Brimson, the 34. Got a try saver in there. Seven tackle breaks, 173 meters. He started really poorly with some uh, an, an error and, and a missed tackle there. He was on negative for the first like 15, 20 minutes, so to get back to 34 is good. Obviously, the worry of him being 18th man or being in the Queensland squad is the, is the issue at this point. Reese Walsh is actually going to front the judiciary, apparently. The match review committee is going uh, for his words at, at, at the ref. So apparently the precedent for this is a is a four-week suspension. It was last time there was something like this that happened. So it'll be interesting to see what happens on that front with Walshy, but obviously his score was terrible at that, which we'll get to in a second. But Brumo, these are the kind of scores you can expect when he's not in the, the try scoring and the line breaks and stuff like that. So run meters... Tackle breaks in there. Obviously, not usually as many negatives on the errors front, but yeah, that was there this game. Tanner Boyd, the 34. So three goals for him, 15 tackles. The other five misses in this one was very, very high compared to where he's usually at. There was you know a stretch there where he was going 20-odd tackles for one miss or zero misses, that kind of thing. Um, and yeah, running the ball a little bit. No attacking stats in this one. Just a 34. And he's someone that I was actually looking to trade Liero to. Uh, so yeah, it worked out better that I didn't waste that or use that trade anyway. Uh, and I can get a better hooker, uh, you know, heading into this next week there for sure. But um, yeah, 10 out of the 34, not great. You're still holding for sure. It sounds like the Dragons have blocked the, the Ben Hunt transfer to anyone. He's going to have to stay. So ridiculous, I think, in my opinion, how that club's going to stick together, that's for sure. Uh, Piakura is the next guy on the list, 31. 
in his 80 minutes, five missed tackles, not a lot in there. He did get a line break yet as well. Uh, Philip Sami actually was another one that people were looking at, but a 33 for him. Big run meters, a few, you know, a bunch of tackle breaks, but yeah, nothing super exciting on that front. And then we roll it down to really Stagsy at 21. Again, not really relevant. Jaden Campbell, six, so he loses another 16K. And Walsh, he loses 34K with his seven. So five errors, two penalties, and five missed tackles. So similar to that of... It was a Ponga and Walsh show last week when they played, or the other week when they played each other. This time it was a shocker. So still, made, he had 168 run meters, 120 kick meters. He had 20 in that alone with an offload and a tackle break and still got seven. So that's pretty disgusting with 24 negatives. And yeah, he's a worry, obviously. You'd imagine next week will be better for him if he doesn't get suspended. So let's find out over the next day or two what happens with Walshy for sure. Let's go to the Bunnies and the Cowboys game. And, and how good do the Cowboys look? They looked great in this one, and the Bunnies were pretty poor. So some worrying scores from, obviously, their Walker and, and these types of guys there. I was really happy with how this game was going, obviously, owning Drinky in this one. Getting the 77 was great. Majority of people do own him. Obviously, those that don't are very frustrated at the moment, but up to 701K. So at least Drinky has repaid the faith for starting with him this year, bringing him back, and I've got majority of his good scores, which is awesome. Uh, but yeah, he's just involved in everything. Getting the field goal, running the ball plenty, 11 tackle breaks, two line breaks, three try assists, try savers, just doing it all, uh, Drinky is. And he can't ask for much more, and he's going to be a keeper in that wing fullback position, especially with the guys like Latrell out, Trevojevic out. There's, um, yeah, slimmer pickings. Teddy not being great, obviously, this week. That killed us. But yeah, Drinky, the 77. Murray, the 62. We knew he was going to play big minutes and put up a much better score, obviously, there. Still having missed tackles, still penalties conceded, but... A good score uh, overall there. Ilias was good as well. Valentine Holmes just finishing off tries like it's easy. Nanai, much better game from him in a Cowboys jersey at least. So a couple in a row now, good ones since he's returned. And hopefully he can maintain that for the rest of the year because the Cowboys are in ninth or 10th now. Gives them a great, I think 10th actually, gives them a really good chance to actually make finals and, and have a bit of a push. And they've got the team to do it, that's for sure. Did in there at 57. He's having a much better little time of it over the last bunch of weeks. Uh, Lucille Lua, 55. I'd, I'd mentioned him myself as, you know, being the Liero replacement, being so cheap. Makes that 10K, gets to 55 in 68 minutes. Just works really hard running the footy, 170 metres, and obviously 32 in the tackles with an offload with a couple of tackle breaks there as well. Was good. We get to one of my players now, Damien Cook. He was absolutely smashing it. He did work pretty hard, though, in that 53 minutes. He got 48 points, which we'll take for sure, and didn't lose any cash this week. But, uh, you know, 40 tackles for him, two turnovers, and a, you know, 45 meters run with a couple of tackle breaks. Worked out great until he went off. And, yeah, this is uh, the price you have to pay sometimes. And, yeah, wasn't expecting it as well. You know, with Moses, with, thankfully, Moses backed up great. But, you know, Cook, Robson, we'll get to in a second. Just the, the guys that end up having to play that 80 minutes in Origin when they were meant to split their time. This is where it really hurt. And they played Marmozellis off the bench. And as soon as I knew... As soon as he was named there, we knew Cook was going to get a rest at some point. And obviously with them getting beat pretty bad, I think it was if it was going to be really close, he might have stayed on. But with them down by about 13, I think, or so when he came off, it made it pretty tough for them and to, you know, for him to be able to get back on the park. For those who grabbed Colin Matungi, the 47 was there. He still make, loses a little bit of cash there going off his uh, recent scores. That's why his break even's a little bit higher. Uh, but I think he'll stay obviously stay at this price if he continues to score that way. Still a high chance, I think, that he does play Origin because he's a very, very good player. Jacob O's 44. Anyone still earning him? To Tola, the 42. It's getting close for to Tola time to be out, I think, to, to you know for him to be finished. 7K gains there, and I think he's almost done on his cash making with the 40 kind of average on a regular basis. Uh, Graham, the 41. Johnson, the 41. Both just okay. Robson, 38 in his 67 minutes. Robbo's going to be one of those guys, I think, in round 19 that will be going for my side. He'll be an outski, considering I have a lot of uh, a lot of hookers, basically. Turpin going down with the rib, inju rib injury in the last game might push me to, to hold on to Robson a little bit longer and actually use Turpin as the trade out. But yeah, with uh, with Robbo there, it's a it's an interesting one. The 38 and 67 minutes did a little bit of everything, but he obviously has a penalty. He has an error. He has some missed tackles in his game. We know that he's not one of the top tier hookers at this point. Yeah, Harry Grant's a guy I'm going to want to get to, but. Yeah, do I end up getting like a Brendan Hands just to cover 19-20 and, uh, 
and then we can kind of go from there. But yeah, that's where we're at. Robson, he's kind of an in, in or out type of player at the moment. Harmo Selly gains 7K as well. So he's going to be a close to being out. Obviously, both him, Totola and Selly play in round 19. So, so if you need him for that, great. If you don't, I'm happy for you to move them on. Jake Carwright actually had an awesome PPM. 26 and 25 minutes. Go him. I did see a few people bring him in. 24K in gains. I did end up trading in Taff. So for 24 for him. He was actually a lot higher than that and ended up with the yeah, four missed tackles, had the error at the end. So, yeah, mixture of uh, not amazing work there, but 24 in this one. When they got smashed, he didn't get to kick his goals. He didn't get to get involved as much, but, you know, worked hard for 177 meters, four tackle breaks in that one. Yeah, some attacking stats will come. And the only I only need the, hopefully, uh, depends what I bring in next week. I may need to play Taff or we'll definitely be looping him for sure. Uh, so hopefully a decent score next week. I believe they play Warriors, but round 19 is a week I've got him for. In that wing fullback position, I want him as the goal-kicking fullback against the Dogs when it's, it should be a pretty tough week for him. But the Souths also need to pick up their game because they've been really poor, Un unfortunately, there. Uh, Finnafriaki, I just wanted to talk him up because that was an awesome run through the middle. He runs with a lot of pace, a lot of vigor. So he's an exciting one for the future. Isaiah Tass with the 14 was pretty yucky. That's for sure. All right, let's go to the last game there. Of the round with Roosters and the Raiders. And, and Horsburgh was the king. How good is this man? The big red. We love him at 86 in 69 minutes. Had a little bit of a break. Obviously, 10, 11 minutes and, and came back strong. 50 tackles, three offloads. You know, 64 in base there. Incredible work from him. And uh, exactly what you want in you know, a mid that's going to be almost 800K now. He's, he's getting closer to you know, Payne Haas territory at 850-odd. So Horse is uh, amazing. We love him so much. Lindsay Collins, a nice try as well. Whiten played pretty well. And Raiders got the win. So Roos is just really, really struggling. A lot of it, the good stuff anyway, came through Joey Manu being able to push his way over. He almost scored a, a third try. It wasn't to be. Um, tried to claim that he passed it as well, but it got kind of stolen when he was trying to score. 27 tackles, three misses, and 108 meters gain. Not a lot changed, to be fair, uh, with how he played in the six with the run meters and stuff like that. Obviously, a fullback is a different beast, but yeah, they did... They were able to get him involved a decent amount without it being a lot. And the Teddy situation is wild. He, he, I completely agree with the majority of people now that he is not himself this year. He's definitely taken a big step back. And it's very sad to see from one of the great fullbacks of, of our generation to to really fall off the cliff like this. And, and it's the team as well. You know, The team's usually fit and firing a bit better and, and he's able to capitalize on a lot of the opportunities that they create. And that hasn't been the case for New South Wales or also for his team, the Roosters. So it's a double whammy this year that both teams are struggling. Uh, White was a massive game for him, 53. So big points, a big point score, big gains there. Foggs was a good one at 59. He had Radley at 52. Again, finally got through a full game. Good on him. Tapani, the, uh, Tapani, the 51 in his 51 minutes. So yeah, solid. If you do own him, you'll take the 51. He does lose 15K. So if you need a mid, he's still an option, guys, under that sort of 50 price bracket. Three offloads, so he's allowed to offload the ball, which was good. 22 tackles only, so that was a low point. All right, Sandon Smith, someone I was pretty keen on grabbing, but did not need a half, so I went for Taff in the end. Obviously, a 220K, that was a, a terrific price to go for. Ended up doing a little bit of everything this game. Obviously, 24 tackles for three misses was good. Ran the footy, got, uh, got an offload in there, got a try assist to Lindsey Smith when he actually moved to the hooking position when when Turpin, uh, when Turpin came off. So shows he's obviously pretty versatile in there and is a solid half. And I think there's a chance that he keeps his spot. If Sam Walker's out, he's obviously the guy to have. But misses round 19, that was kind of the big issue for me. If you grabbed him, you got really rewarded rewarded with a 50. Uh, if you had to play him, even better. Happy days. Uh, Turp, so so happy with him at the moment. Not sure. I haven't heard anything further from from uh, the Terps or the, the Tacklebot Terps or the... Um, or the Roosters camp at 43 tackles for him in the 62 minutes was awesome. Did get an offload in there as well. So thanks Terps for your service. 153K from his starting price, but we got him probably what, 330? I think I, I think we got him there. So a good couple hundred K in rises for us and an awesome cash cow. And if I wanted to just make the one trade, if I didn't have Trent Liero, I'd be able to go one trade there, Terps to, um, Terps to IPAP, which is pretty cool. But yeah, the, the question remains there. Is, is he actually injured? Is he going to get named? We'll find out tomorrow. We'll be able to make our decisions on Terps uh, on that front. But I think that even if he does come back, it's a rib complaint. We'll find out more from mineral physio and the like there. But 
uh, really, with the buy-in round 19 with Brandon Smith coming back, I think that likely he's not going to be playing more than this deal of 60 minutes, I'd imagine, with even with Brandon back. Um, could be less, could be more, whatever. But uh, yeah, I'd say his money-making potential is going to be slower now anyway. Even if he gets the one more this week, I think it's going to slow down for sure. Uh, Wolford with a good score. Timoko, 42 in that one. Same with Croker. Both had really solid games there. But uh, yeah, is, is, is Timoko keeper territory in the centers? He's a little bit up and down. A little bit too up and down for my liking in a team that's just okay. And then uh, Billy Smith got the 32 in this one. If you had to play in, that was uh, yeah, helpful in a way. Teddy, the 20, really, was just the finisher here. Obviously, Pap, uh, J- Josh Papali'i got the injury. Not good. Same with Crichton. Same with Egan Butcher. There's a lot going on here. Crichton is so cheap at 472 now. It's crazy. Teddy down 16K after his big score. So, thankfully, he doesn't lose a chunk. But, uh, yeah, 197 meters here. Four errors. Just, you know, even just offloads that, you know, Santa Smith had the offload back on the inside to him. And he just drops it. And just those type of things just don't happen. In the SD year, they don't happen last year, so he, just, he is having a bit of a shocker. Thankfully, he's been able to score really well in fantasy apart from this game. Um, he's had a couple of low ones, obviously, but you know, offset with the really high scores and, and have really helped out my squad in making ranks. But yeah, Neg 10 in this one, one tackle rake, and it was a bit of a nothing. Like, yeah, it was a one-on-one tackle, but then he broke that and someone else grabbed him straight away, so it didn't even help the the offense. But uh, yeah, Teddy, likely we give him one more, one more crack at it, right? Because, you know, next week... Um, they come up again. Oh, they played Canberra last week. That was good. It'll t- anyway, we'll, we'll work it out. I can't remember who they're playing, but yeah, that'll be another week for him, and then we can work it out. If he goes poor next week, then look to move, but I don't know. We have a lot, We don't have a lot of trades left either, so making those decisions is very, very difficult. They are the three games, guys. I'll get into the round results for our next video. Hope you enjoyed it.